a week has made it no easier. By the flowers at the Bataclan Concert Hall, people are still here to reflect, to remember and to ask why. 89 people were killed in here. Five died on this road. 15 at this bar and 19 at a birthday party in here. It's something that moves you deeply. There are no words to describe it. And for the past week, we haven't found the words for that. But there is a resistance to a determination to continue with life as normal. Seven miles to the north, they're clearing up the apartment where the mastermind of the attacks was killed on Wednesday. The forensics teams are still here. They've now revealed that a third person died inside the building. The attack ringleader, Abdul Hamid Aboud, was shot. His cousin was also killed, but she didn't blow herself up as previously thought. The identity of the third person has not been revealed. There is potentially a huge amount they can glean from inside here, not just about this terror cell, but others too. The French Prime Minister has made it quite clear that they don't yet know how many others were operating with Abba Oud. Well, from the top of this multi-storey car park, you can get quite a clear view of the roof of the apartment block. This car park is where the police snipers were based during the course of the siege. In the intensity of the battle, tiles were broken. Belongings from within the apartment are now scattered on the roof. In this broad investigation, a metro station has now become a focus. Abba Oud, it's emerged, was here on the night of the attacks. He was picked up on several security cameras, including this one. It was just after 10 p.m. and the siege at Bataclan, several miles away, was ongoing. Another camera picked him up at the barriers. It showed him passing through without paying. Investigators will be trying to establish if he met the attackers near this station because this Siet car, which was used as a getaway vehicle after at least two of the attacks, was recovered just around the corner. The car was hired by this man, Brahim Abdel Slam, seen here in newly released Belgian police footage, being arrested in Brussels six months ago. He'd been involved in an incident at a bar he owned. Brahim was the man who blew himself up outside the Compatoire Voltaire Café on Friday night. His younger brother Salah Abdel Slam is the only attacker not to have died and he is still on the run. Intriguingly, friends of the brothers speaking to French TV claim they heard the siblings arguing in their Brussels apartment the night before the attacks. Thursday night I was at my place. I heard an argument, a massive argument. I leaned against the window and I saw the two brothers. They were there. They were having a fight. The only thing I could understand was I'm not going if I don't have any money. The other one said, no, you're going. He said to him, if I don't have any dosh, I'm not budging. Without dosh, I'm not going. There is no sense here, though, that people are worried. A terrorist is still being hunted, but in Paris, they're simply remembering the dead. Mark Stone, Sky News, in France. Well, joining us now from Paris is Senator Natalie Goulet. She's vice chairwoman of France's Senate Foreign Affairs Committee. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. And a week on from the attacks in Paris, it seems that there's a remarkable degree uh, of uh, unanimity almost amongst French politicians supporting the measures uh, which the government has come forward with since. Yeah, absolutely. We, we vote this afternoon. Um, with a, a strong unanimity, except one, I think, and the communist, as uh, a state of emergency, which is a, a brand new situation for most part of us. And uh, that state of emergency also will include restrictions on French borders, is that correct? Well, we, that included a lot of uh, measures, but uh, regarding the French borders, that was also one of the decisions taken this morning uh, in Brussels with all the Minister of European Union, because, you know, French borders are really a, a European borders regarding the Schengen Agreement, and I know that for you it's a big problem, but for us it's also an issue, included the, um, the sea borders, because we have a border on the house, but 
uh, land borders, but we also have sea borders. So um, we try to increase the cooperation between all the European countries on the subject. It also seems that uh, French citizens uh, accept the need to uh, accept these restrictions on their liberties. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, could, could you repeat? I'm saying it, it, as well as the politicians, there's been relatively little protest from French citizens about the restrictions on their liberties in the uh, state of emergency. Well, I mean, um, the people have to be uh, secure, you know. Um, for the state, uh, we, we have to assure uh, the security and the safety of the citizen. And um, um, watching the... First of all, we trust our police. We trust the system. Uh, we also have this uh, a state of emergency in a frame of a very strong state of law. I mean, we didn't break the state of law. We just make a new frame for this state of emergency and just for three months. Um, it's always under a judicial uh, surveillance. And I think that the people feel very secure. The citizens feel very secure. Uh, we catch a lot of people. We have more than 200 requisition. Um, all that is, um, uh, first of all, for our security and also to let the police work properly with free hands, but always under um, judiciary surveillance. Does that include people from Islamic backgrounds, uh, from the Maghreb as well? I'm, I'm sorry, could you repeat uh, it? I'm just saying, do, do, you, do you think that view is shared by uh, the ethnic communities, the uh, Maghrebian communities as well? Well, I mean, you are touching a, a real serious point that, um, uh, of course, we, we start to have some perquisition in some uh, Salafist mosque. Uh, and, uh, of course, most part of uh, the radicalization uh, is all, always among um, a Muslim. But um, especially, I have to underline that uh, among the 7,000 uh, people under surveillance for radicalization or being on verge of radicalization, you have more than 30% of convert people. Mean Christian uh, convert into Muslim to fight ISIL, to fight with ISIL. So also the state of emergency will affect uh, the, the citizen who are Muslim, but also the one who are not Muslim. And what we, we are going to uh, be afraid of and we try to avoid, it's uh, some uh, bad behavior and Islamophobia, and it's already started. So we are uh, very cautious about that, and uh, we would like uh, the Muslim community of France to know that they are absolutely part as a citizen of our republic, and they have all their place in the republic, and that they are not targeted at, at, as, uh, as Muslim, but they cover, or inside the community, they have, uh, let's say, black ships, okay. and uh, that we have, to, we have to fight. Senator, thank you very much indeed for joining us from Place de la République. We can see uh, people lighting candles there, and these are some of the latest pictures uh, from uh, La Place de la République. Uh, as you can see, they show the solidarity in the city has shown in the wake of these terror attacks, which last Friday... They happened almost exactly to the minute this time last week at 20 minutes past eight. And France is now, of course, leading the fight against terror and the Islamic State, as we've been hearing, and is calling on the world to back a common war uh, on the IS. And uh, Sky's Jane Secker is there.